Hello, I'm Peter Keegan, and what we're going to do now is we're going to be looking in detail of some of the tools and materials that we're going to be using today when it comes to creating our charcoal portrait. Well, I'll explain in a bit further detail of what these materials are and also how we go about using them. The charcoal medium which we're going to be using today is a brilliant, beautiful piece of rendering material we're going to be using. Now, the reason being, it's a very, very flexible, very malleable uh, drawing material. Therefore, we can uh, really manipulate it and it has a lot of great qualities that are actually very, very similar to painting. And that's more specifically oil and acrylic painting. Because of the range of mark making we can make with the charcoal, it translates very, very well to painting. So if this method that you try, you enjoy it and it works for you, you can easily translate that further into painting. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at some of our materials that we're going to be using. We're going to start off with the ground, that's the surface, that's the paper that we're going to be using. Now I've got it stuck up here on my easel, I've uh, masked and taped it all the way around and it is a simple sugar paper. I've got a sheet of it by here. Now it's a very very lightweight uh, paper, hasn't got uh, too much weight, it's got some flexibility, it's not very very rigid like card and the most important thing is what I'm looking for is the surface area. It's got a fairly smooth area, there's a little bit of grip there that the quality of sugar paper has. Now there are lots of different papers on the market that you can buy, I'm not particularly fussy about the paper that I use as long as it has a fairly smooth quality. You don't want it completely flat and smooth, say for example like cartridge paper or card where there's no grip at all, you want to have a little bit of a grip that picks up the grain of that charcoal and likewise you don't want something that's too coarse, so for example pastel, some pastel papers where the groove or the weave of the paper is so much so that it will really really grip all that charcoal and you have to work it in a little bit. So this is a really kind of good in-between uh, texture that you're looking for. Now you'll also notice that the um, the paper is toned, it's a coloured toned piece of paper. Now that's really important for when we're going to be doing this today. Now the reason that's important is because it offers us a mid-tone range. Now because of that we can put two marks on top, we could put dark charcoal marks and we can put highlights, chalk, white marks on top. So it offers us a full spectrum of tone. Now I'm just gonna demonstrate why that is important here. You see, when we're working with mid-tone, we have a, a range that we can work with. Okay, now we're gonna start off with the darkest tone first. And when we do our drawing, we're gonna start off with our dark tone first. Now starting up here, this is gonna be our very, very darkest section here. And I'm pushing really, really, really hard with my charcoal. And you can see all the other dust and pigment sort of coming on down. So I'm pushing as hard as I possibly can there. Now, as I'm gonna bring it down the scale, I'm gonna get lighter and lighter until I get to this section, which is gonna be my absolute lighter section here, which is my highlight. Now I need to sort of blend these two together to come to the middle and leaving a gap in the middle which is there and there which is going to be my mid-tone because I want the mid-tone to show through my drawing once I'm finished. So as I take this down I'm just going to ease off the pressure of my charcoal going down until I meet this middle scale here and stop. Now you can use your finger and you can sort of blend that and soften it if you wish until you go all the way down to your mid-tone, which is here, and I'm going to leave that paper come through as my mid-tone, and then this white is going to do the opposite. It's going to go all the way to the top, and it's going to get lighter and lighter until it hits that mid-tone region. So that's the scale, if you like, of what we're going to be using today. There are areas of our charcoal drawing which are going to be absolutely dark, then it's going to get lighter, then we're going to get to this mid-tone section which is the paper doing our job for us, we're going to have some of that come through, and then edging towards the very, very highlight, finishing with the absolute brightest tip that we can see. So that is the scale of the tonal values that we're going to be working with today. So that's why it's important to work on a toned, a coloured ground. If this was a white piece of paper, we wouldn't have any of this. We would just have this top section to there. So by working on a coloured piece of paper, we add that. Now it doesn't have to be a, a sort of a boring buff colour. You can use any other colour. A neutral colours work best, but equally you can use a, a mid-grade purple, green, blue, also work very, very well offering that mid-tone colour. So that's why it's a fantastic way to start. So let's look specifically now at the charcoal that we're going to be using. I use willow charcoal. Now willow charcoal is essentially a branches and bits of wood that have been slowly, slowly cooked and you're essentially just left with the charred remains. And it's very, very light, it's wonderfully light and you can get a huge range of textures and, and lightnesses. So by holding the charcoal at the very, very tip, 
I can offer very, very light marks. So as you can see, I can just lay that on and I'm barely making any marks at all. And as I push harder and harder, you can get a real kind of nice range as well. Now that's a sort of a medium sort of a medium to small size stick. You can of course get much larger sticks like this one, which are very, very good for the initial blocking in stages. Now I've got it nice and flat, and that's just where I've overworked it, as I've uh, worked it on other drawings before. If you have a new stick of charcoal and it's very, very round, you might want to break it in just by blocking it in and really flattening it. Okay, and that only will not only uh, just give you an example of what you can do with that technique, but also you can get it uh, nice and thick, so you could do nice, strong planes of mark making, okay, which tend to look really quite interesting and quite expressive. I've also got a really tiny piece of charcoal, which is much skinnier, which is the skinniest of all, which is very, very good for doing little bits of squiggly details like that. So particularly if you're doing eyelashes, or if you need to do little sort of bits around the eyes or the nose, it's very, very good just to give you that point. However, if you really, really want precision, then like I use when we're going to be working with the eyes later on, um, I use a charcoal pencil. Now, this is a charcoal pencil, not a compressed piece of charcoal. Now, the difference between willow charcoal and compressed charcoal is willow charcoal is that uh, piece of wood that's been charred and you're left with that remains, which make the mark. Compressed charcoal is that charcoal that's been ground up and then kind of glued and stuck back together. So when you lay the mark, it's actually very, very thick. It's almost like a pastel, okay? It comes across very, very heavy. Now, I don't like using those because it creates a very, very black, dark mark, and it's very, very difficult to kind of get the softness and the variation of this tonal chart. So try as best you can, just use willow charcoal. And if you're going to use charcoal pencils, just make sure it's not compressed charcoal. Now, the reason I use the pencil is because I can sharpen it and I can get a very, very fine point. If you at home, if you don't have any charcoal pencils, you can just use your willow charcoal, which is fine. Just get a knife or a sharpener and you can sharpen it until you get that nice pointy tip, which will give you that detail. And that's what the, the pencil's for. It's just to give you that precision and that detail. So for example, when it comes to sort of doing the detail of the eyes, you can sort of do a little bit of the mark, again, little eyelashes and so on, as well as giving you a nice range of mark making like that. So I'm just sort of doing some cross hatching here, which you'll see later how I utilize that for the portrait. So that's the charcoal that we're gonna be using today. The other tool, the essential tool, which you might be using as much as the charcoal, are the erasers and the rubbers. Now I've got a couple of examples here. I've just a normal sort of classroom school eraser. Okay, it's nice and flexible. It's very, very muddy and covered in charcoal dust. But if ever I wanted to remove something, just by laying it on, you can notice and just see that it comes away fairly easy and then the worst though that the charcoal mark is taken away so it's a great raz uh, razor there are also putty rubbers work just as well they're very very malleable you can tear them up into small bits and manipulate the putty rubber to make it very very small and then you can get into little in intricate spaces the other eraser i have is one of these it's what i call a pencil eraser i think that's what i call it i'm sure it has a, a proper name but by it's a it's a clean eraser which has a nice little tip to it so if you again wanted to get into specific detail in the middle of something that's quite messy you can sort of work your way into it and then you can get something fairly crisp and fairly, fairly clear. Okay, so it's a really, really good tool. So getting things like hair, getting highlights on out uh, on clothing, maybe highlights on eyebrows or glasses even, this is a really, really wonderful tool just for picking up that highlight. So that's the erasers. The, uh, the last uh, material we're going to be using today is chalk. Now, white chalk. I've got uh, two different examples here. First of all, I've just got a stick of normal white chalk, so the sort of chalk that you used to get in, uh, in schools on the blackboard. And similar to this charcoal drawing at the start with the big, thick, uh, clumpy bit, by laying it nice and flat, you can make nice, broad, big strokes, as well as using the tip, of course, for getting uh, smaller strokes and lines. And of course, using your fingers, making sure they're clean, you can blend and work that in, similar to what we did with that tonal uh, uh, exercise at the start. Um, and lastly, it's uh, if you want the precision, like the charcoal pencil, I have a chalk pencil here. So in the same method, if I want to get absolute precision, I can use this chalk pencil, I can sharpen it just to get a nice point. And then if I wanted to get some small details around eyes, like the white of an eye, or highlight, or lines on the hair or clothing, okay, the charcoal pencil is a really, really useful asset and great thing to have. 
Um, once you've finished your drawing, there's another important piece of, uh, of tool that you're going to need, and that's a fixative. Now, a fixative is what we call um, the, the protection layer that you're going to give to your charcoal drawing to stop it from smudging, because it's a very, very unstable, it's a stable surface, but an unstable uh, material putting on top. So it needs protecting, because you'll notice very, very quickly that you can smudge it and, and ruin your work. So by fixing it, you will protect it. Now, there's a range of different fixatives on the, uh, fixatives on the market. They all do the same uh, job and you can do no worse than this sort of fixative which is a bog standard hairspray. Now that's a good artist tip. A lot of artists actually don't buy fixative, they actually buy hairspray. The extra firm hairspray you can get in any old shops. Try and get it so it doesn't smell otherwise your studio will smell like a hell smell like a hair salon um, but they're really really fantastic now to, to the way you fix it is very very important don't be tempted to spray it while it's up on the board okay it's not a spray painting and by doing that you might get very bleached you might get sort of very watery marks which might look like that and that's what you don't want to it because that will ruin your painting and that will actually stain the um, the paper so the best thing to do is to lay your drawing flat on the floor on a flat surface and from about a meter three foot away is spray and allow that spray just to slowly settle very evenly and that'll distribute on your uh, on your charcoal drawing and you can do as many layers as you like I usually do about sort of four or five layers initially and you can never put too many layers so if you're taking your drawing or moving it around you can spray it again with some fixative the next day the next week even years later just to give that added protection to stop that from smudging when you're transporting or if you do find yourself that you need to transport your drawings around it's always good to put a nice sheet of paper on top of it so either a large piece of tracing paper new sheet or just another piece of uh, a paper that you're drawing and lay that very gently on top so when it comes to transporting it whether you roll it up very lo loosely and sell it uh, mask and tape it together or put it flat in a folio when you transfer, uh, transport it to a framers or anywhere else that should keep it nice and protected so it's a very, very simple range of materials that we're going to be using and I'll show you now how we go using them for a portrait.